Hello and welcome to June's editorial for Journalism Studies, Volume 14, Number 3. And what an issue. There are 11 major articles involving scholars from USA, UK, Germany, Ireland, Denmark, Belgium, Canada, Colombia, Greece, India, Japan, Italy, South Korea, Australia, Sweden, Norway, and Israel. Leah Helmuller, Tim Voss, and Mark Pepsi open the issue with their study of a shift from objectivity to transparency-oriented journalistic field, with evidence drawn from 228 surveys completed by US online journalists, followed by Karin Wall Jorgensen's essay, which explores subjectivity in journalism storytelling, using Pulitzer Prize-winning stories as illustrative exemplars. Michael Mayan and Anki Fiedler deploy an extremely interesting methodology which uses autobiographies and documentary sources to construct what they call a collective biography of journalists in the German Democratic Republic, while Julius Sonnevin discusses the construction of counter-revolutionary icons to explore the representation of the counter-revolution of 1956 in Hungary in the Hungarian Communist Party press, subsequent to 56. Kevin Rafter and Steve Knowlton offer a compelling account of what they call very shocking news, involving the ethics of reporting the very personal details of the terminal illness of an Irish politician immediately prior to Christmas and before the politician concerned had informed his immediate family about his health. Morton Skovsgaard and Ian van Dalen argue that in Denmark commercialization strengthens the political beat at the expense of others since political reporters are cost-effective and that this has negative implications from the viewpoint of participatory democracy. Torrell Alberg and ten colleagues present findings from their comparative study of television in 11 countries and across four continents concerning foreign news coverage and public opinion. Geert Jacob and Els Toback offer a case study of the use of Dutch language quotes in French language TV news to explore whether language itself is a news value in Belgium. One Max Ekstrom, Joran Eriksson, Bent Johansson and Patrick Wikstrom use a multi-method approach to analyse bias in election campaign news and interviews. Peter Bro offers a surprisingly rare analysis of James Carey's seminal work focused on journalistic communication. And finally, Roy Davidson examines the role of boundary work in the emergence of financial journalism in Israel. Once again, this is an extraordinarily rich issue in terms of the number and range of es essays, the diverse foci, the range of journalism topics addressed, and the comparative character of much of the reported research. And as ever, the issue concludes with a number of book reviews of recent publications within our field of study. I hope you'll enjoy reading it as much as I have putting it together. But for now, that's all there is.